everyone, welcome back. Today we're here at Santa Fe Community College to explore their growing dome, which they are using for aquaponics. It's not just being used by the sustainability departments here, but it's also being used by culinary arts and the trade schools. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look, see what they've done and what they're growing. This 26 foot growing dome was originally built in 2013 and since then they have made some changes. We do have a full detailed video on our channel all about their original aquaponics setup which I'll link for you right up here. Some of the things that they've changed is that they have upgraded from two upper vents to an attic fan to help control the air temperature in here and they also have changed the orientation of the beds so that the students can have room to grow and learn as well as be able to sit and enjoy each other's time and study together. They do have some more traditional aquaponic plants in here like basil and lettuce, but they also have some really unique varieties. But I'm gonna let Pedro talk about all of the things that they're doing in here and how the whole system works. Welcome everybody. We're here in our Growing Spaces Dome at SFCC. About a year, I think it was a year and a half ago, we rebuilt the whole greenhouse. Students were able to come here, redo the electricity because it was too low. So we got the greenhouse in a way now that it's safe. Beds are away. We have space for socializing. And now I can explain a little better how aquaponic works because basically we try to use in the design just one pump. So the pump is going to grab the water from the lowest level of, of a tank. We pump it up. In this case, we pump it through an aeration system. And because this is a dome, we try to focus in a very passive process. So we try to spend the less energy possible in a setup like this in a dome. So I'm using the same energy that my water pump uses to move the water to aerate the fish water. So now these piping is just aerating the water for the fish. And now everything goes by gravity. This water level is the highest. Then this filter gets the water level a little lower. Then the other filter gets the water level a little lower and then it keeps moving to the beds. And after all the water gets to the beds, it goes back into my sump tank and the pump resets the whole thing. That way, it's a very simple circulation on the water and the fish can do what they need to do. My bacteria can do what they need to do. And then my plants are gonna clean that water so I can pump it back to the fish. We have right now koi and goldfish. One of the things that we have to understand in aquaponics is the temperature that we have to keep these plants in, and it's about the same temperature that the fish needs to be in. So we need kind of like a warm, warm water fish. So koi, goldfish, and tilapias are one of the best. A lot of times we don't like to use goldfish and koi mostly goldfish because they can reproduce very easy in the system and then i got fish moving into the beds and eating the root system so soon with students because the semester just started we're going to start eliminating most of the goldfish from here to other systems that can have the goldfish and not reproduce well and we can we're going to fill this up with tilapia tilapia is the best fish for aquaponics i don't know if you have heard about it but it's we call it a bulletproof fish they sometimes can be out of the water for 30 minutes if they jump out and you can put them back in. Koi and goldfish are not. They're very susceptible fish. If you get them out of the water, they die very quickly. Obviously, they're fish. They're supposed to be in the water. Um, but tilapias are the hardest one. Tilapias can grow in salt water as the same as in fresh water. So if the water gets a little high in nutrients, that's salt nutrients, tilapias don't mind. Here in our commercial size greenhouse, we stagger fish so we can produce different size fish at different timings. And at the same time, we do cycles on veggies so we can have fresh fish and fresh veggies every week or every month. So that's why, and this is the tank that have the biggest tilapias. We have very baby tilapias on that one and a little bigger on the other ones. We have them ready to, to take out and eat if we want. Oh my goodness. It's so pretty. <laughs> Wow. So this is what's going to go in the tanks in the growing dome eventually. Exactly. All the big tilapias are going to be moved there. So it's easier for us to then harvest them and use them for the culinary department because they teach our students what to do with the fish. 
how to kill it, how to fillet them, if they're gonna use it for ceviche or whatever. Here are the freshest tilapias that you can get in New Mexico. They are huge too. <laughs> you said they were big, but they I are didn't huge. That. <laughs> One of the things that I talk a lot with my students is the water that we use in all of our aquaponic system is rain water. We collect rain water, we get the systems full, we replenish the system with rain water all the time. And basically we buy our fish when they're very baby from a grower. So these fish have not been exposed to any microplastic or to any contaminations out in the rivers or in the oceans. So everything that we do here is the cleanest that I can say that you can get a fish. So if we're growing tilapias in our aquaponic units and filtering and maintaining water quality like we teach our students, this fish are the cleanest fish. Same thing, we get so perfect and nice nutrient level waters when we run a system correctly that in New Mexico, in a place that is not tropical at all, we're growing this beautiful passion fruit plant. And soon my students are gonna be able to see that beautiful passion fruit flower and try the fruits. But this is something that will never grow here in New Mexico. Around here, if I keep walking around, we have some basil plants. In summertime here, we can do basil, but basil hates cold temperatures. If we are in our winter time, we have to have a system or a dome or a greenhouse like this to control the temperature so we can have beautiful basil like this every, every month of the year. Um, and I'm gonna walk a little bit around. So you see, we got celery, we got lettuces, we got blackberry bushes on the other side. So in an aquaponic system, a lot of times people talk about it's only for greens. No, we can do fruits, we can do big berries, we can do tomatoes. So the whole system and the water quality that creates in an aquaponic system, it's enough to grow all kinds of crops. In aquaponics, our plants become my second filter. My first filter back there converts all the poop and everything that the fish does in the water into nutrients. And now the water high in nutrients comes under the plants. And this is what's happened. All my root systems grow big. I aerate my water so they don't get bad. And then they take all the nutrients in the water. So when the water goes back to my last tank, I can pump it cleaner to the fish plants that are not that big or adult, you're gonna have a little bit smaller root system, but they're all gonna grow out. One of the things that we can't do is let fish come down here, because if the fish start coming down here, they're gonna eat our root system and I can't have growth. Well, I'm gonna be explaining a little bit of what are these hydroponic systems, because apart from aquaponic in a dome, we can do this type of other hydroponic units. These NFT channels are flat on the bottom, so we can put the little plugs in, inside it has a cap, so it's easy to clean. And the table is a little incline, so we can drip water on the other side. Water comes all the way wet, getting the roots wet. And then there's usually a pipe here that we collect the water back into a reservoir tank, and then we recirculate the water. And these are hydroponic systems that we can get in a dome, smaller scales to produce a lot in a small footprint. Same way, if we move this way, we have Dutch bucket units. Dutch bucket units are for viney plants. Those NFTs are shallow. We are fast crops, lettuces, pak choy, basil. When we do buckets, we can do tomatoes, we can do cucumbers, bell peppers, eggplants that you're seeing here. So these plants can stay in this hydroponic system for longer and we feed them by a dripping system. So a little bit of water goes into the, bu into the buckets in a timer so we can lower our energy consumption and we feed the plants the correct nutrients. Talking about our systems, aquaponics and hydroponic systems, there's recirculating water units. So we don't dump water out, we recirculate. And a lot of times, most of our system, we are floating our plants in water. So I got a lot of students that ask me, how can we do potatoes or how can we do turmeric or ginger? Because they're roots and those will not grow in the water in my floating rafts. So we also have a little design that we brought here that is called the weaking beds. So basically it's two big beds that we have a liner under to collect water. The first level in that liner, it's gravel. So it's big three quarter of an inch to an inch diameter gravel. And then we put a mesh on it on top of the gravel and then we fill the rest with soil. Now I have a tank and some piping just to connect the two bottoms of the gravel and now I can pump water under. I can use all my aquaponic filter water that it's dirty. I can put it here 
or I can get my hydroponic nutrient water and put it here, rotate in the bottom, and the beauty of that is I don't have to wet my soil beds. The water wicks up from the bottom. So if I get my hand in here, look how wet this is it. And it's just wicking the water from the bottom of it. And I don't have to deal with watering my plants or anything like that. I just fill that up, turn the system on, and I got the water flowing and it's a recirculating soil beds. So these beds are built in a standard rectangular shape but you could easily adapt this design to work in your growing dome with your perimeter garden beds or even your central garden bed and have the piping running from your pond with your fish to utilize that as an aquaponics tank. Now we're gonna meet with Sai, who is a former student here at Santa Fe Community College and he loved greenhouse management so much, he decided to come back as a greenhouse technician. I used to go to school here seven years ago, but now I work here. Uh, I'm a graduate of the, back in the day it was greenhouse management, but now it's called controlled environment agriculture. Every day I come in here and I look for pests, of course, but I look at the water quality really. So I'll lift up this uh, trough here or this raft here and I will uh, test the water for pH nutrient level and temperature. Aquaponics, you want it to be between 6.4 and 6.8. That's because fish like a quality of 7.0 alkaline and plants like it acidic. They like around 5.8. So you're bridging the two together in the 6.4 to 6.8. So test the water, uh, feed the fish. The matala pads, we have to clean very uh, often like once or twice a week. And to do that, we just, uh, we would turn the pump off. I would take these pads out and I would go outside by the compost and hose them off, get all the gunk off and then put them back. I'd say about once a month, you would want to clean that trough too. The pests in here really are fungus gnats and aphids, if any at all. The dome actually stays quite clean, I've noticed. It's usually in our bigger greenhouse, at our commercial greenhouse, growing more plants. However, with pest management, all you want to do is you really want to fondle your plants. You really want to come in here and you want to look under all the undercarriages. You want to look where a pest would be. Um, if I found aphids, then aphids you can remove using water. That takes a long time though. You're there with a hand sprayer or a hose sprayer and you're physically removing the aphids. Sometimes that doesn't work. So we recommend a Pyganic or a, another organic a neem oil, neem oil or Pyganic. Those are both uh, organic because they're naturally derived from plants. But with, if you have aphids, I would use neem oil or Pyganic. Our CEA program is Control Environment Agriculture. Um, we can do a one year curriculum or a two year certificate. The rest of the things, because a lot of times we produce too much, um, it goes part to the culinary department so our chefs can teach what to do with a lot of the crops that we grow here. Um, a lot of times that's the big thing. It, chefs, uh, people that wants to learn how to cook, don't know what to do with some of the crops. And now we're trying to mingling together with the other programs so they can start coming around, showing the students how we do stuff. And I think we had a group earlier today here that it was from the culinary department. And I think they were high school students doing the dual credit. So we're also pushing those dual credit classes to high school students to get credits from college doing all these things that we're doing. I was drawn to greenhouse management as it was called back in the day. I was from small town New Mexico and this was the closest college to me. Um, we're actually one out of three colleges in the country that do this. During my time here, I've realized like we're actually growing food. And so I fell in love with the fresh produce. And so after spending a little time here as a student, I went on to work more in grocery stores and I became like a produce manager. And I got really got to see like the quality of organic food. And it's not that great. I mean, it's okay. But this stuff is not labeled organic, but it's way better than anything organic. So I came back to my professor and I was all like, is there anything uh, around that is controlled environment? And he was like, well, you know, I still need a lot of help around here. So why don't you come help me out and get your bearings back and try to see where you can go from there. 
A lot of this farming is hands-on and uh, I can see why people want to come back and do internships and get back into the groove. The cool thing about when you graduate from uh, Santa Fe Community College, especially in the Controlled Environment Agriculture Department, is that the teachers say a phone call is always free. You're always able to call us and ask questions. So when you come here, you get the knowledge and you can always uh, revert back to us, email, call, and you stay in touch and you always are in the know. There's another department that we have here, it's called the Campus Cupboard. And the Campus Cupboard is just to feed our community. But everything that we produce, everything that we grow in this dome and in our big greenhouse, all of the lettuce, all of the blackberries, tomatoes, cucumbers, and everything that we grow, it's free to take home for the students. And that's one of the big things. Some of our students don't have the money, don't have the, you know, the facility to get fresh food out because they're, they don't have enough or their parents are not you know, wealthy enough. And we have that campus cup where we get canned food and other kinds of things that gets donated. And now we're starting to produce all these fresh vegetables. We bag them, we fill the, a, a fridge there and students can go and get food for free. So that's one of the biggest and the most incredible things that I love to do here is feeding the community and giving all this food for free. Here at Santa Fe Community College, the Growing Dome is growing far more than just plants. It's growing our next generation of environmental stewards. This is a place where education comes to life and sustainable agriculture is taking root. If you're interested in bringing a Growing Dome to your school to add to your curriculum, please visit growingspaces.com for information on how to get started. Together, we can create a greener, more sustainable future. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.